Thanks for watching this video. In this one, you're going to get a glimpse of our live trading room. Now, we teach uh, via Zoom. Our traders are situated all over the world, okay? Various different continents and various different stages of life, various ages, careers, backgrounds, everything like that. Anyone and everyone is welcome into our trading room because there really is nothing holding you back if you want to learn, so long as you have the correct mentors. Myself and my co-founder, Alex Sorrow, have been trading for years and teaching people for years and have a public showcase showing you um, us doing that. But I thought the best thing to do would be to take a snippet out of our live room, which we're running today. Today is April the 9th. We've got lots of markets to cover before US data tomorrow, New Zealand data later tonight. Um, Canada data tomorrow as well. We're going over all market setups as we do every day, teaching everyone to trade them. So I'm going to join the Zoom room now and we're going to go. All righty. Okay. So let's get started here and we'll go in our usual. <coughs> we'll track this all externally here and then post a recap for everybody. And obviously, you'll have the video recording as a more extensive uh, recap. So let's start looking for uh, potential trade ideas, biases, et cetera. Um, and that's the EuroCAD as always. So momentum on EuroCAD going into the session is um, kind of sideways here on this range, highs, lows, uh, with a slightly positive tilt. So we can call this neutral to long on the uh, on the momentum. The daily is going to look short at resistance, so that's uh, going to be a short from a swing uh, perspective for a move back into the averages around these highs. Remember that you can scale in pretty much into this peak here. Anything above that should probably be damage control or stops or whatever you use, uh, because at that point, this trade idea here, which is what you're selling as a swing, um, might not be relevant anymore. The four hour does not have a setup. It doesn't have a radical move like here into a level, uh, but it is at market at that same resistance level. So neutral to short is probably the bias without a setup there necessarily, but it's there. And then the one hour doesn't really have much of a setup either. We have a double top. It broke a little bit, hunted some stops. Maybe down it goes again. It's very hard um, because you don't have any ebb and flow. You have a 14 pip range, you know, on the uh, shorter candles and, it's not really going to allow you to see a full setup on the one hour. And you're not going to be trading candles that could be seven pips out of a 14 pip range and expect anything out of it on the one hour. So the one hour is a complete neutral. Uh, you can always go down into lower time frames and, and work that out, but not on the one hour, which is what we look at now. Pound Canada, momentum here is uh, long. Yeah, we're getting uh, some strength in sterling, some uh, uh, weakness in the Canadian dollar ahead of the uh, the Bank of Canada tomorrow, which is expected to uh, stand pat on rates, but potentially show a little bit of dovishness. Uh, the uh, daily here, from a swing perspective, it's going to look short soon. Um, it's hitting the 61.8 now, right? Um, and this area here is going to be short from a technical perspective, all the way into the highs. So it's going to start looking short. You don't have a seminar. Um, I don't know if you want to, I mean, the, the better the opportunity is for the swing. Uh, you can use that as a bias indicator for lower time frame trading as well. Um, so it's going to start looking short uh, very soon. The four-hour chart um, is running into a broken support level there. It's a bit of a flip zone with resistance, support, 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 all the way there. This zone here. Um, and then the next resistance zone is not up until here, which is about 70 pips away. I don't know how much strength this has uh, before it comes down. It's hard to tell. Uh, but it's going to start looking uh, short as well. You don't have a sell signal at that broken um, support level yet. Uh, so there's no setup, but uh, you can keep an eye on it or a neat, neutral to short look. And the one hour uh, could show some uh, short mean reversion, but you would need um, to be confident in the resistance level. Uh, so you're going to go in here on the one hour and make sure you like that broken support level. And if you think you're going to be seeing a reaction there, again, the resistance is up here, right? This is a 
quasi resistance because it's only broken support. There's no resistive price action uh, other than this one here. Uh, but if you like it and you want to use it, then the one hour can give you a mean reversion entry as soon as a uh, sell bar shows up. So that's going to look short. Euro New Zealand. Momentum is uh, short here. <clears throat> the uh, A lot of the banks are revising their expectations for cuts uh, out of the ECB for 2024, and they're revising them down like, uh, you know, they should be doing with the Fed. <laughs> And, um, uh, you know, and, but we're not seeing a lot of weakness yet in the euro, at least not fundamental long-term uh, weakness, uh, but we do have a pullback here. Again, the Kiwi has benefited over the last uh, uh, couple of days of, uh, of some more constructive trading environments and, and due to their, um, uh, you know, how sensitive they are to the uh, risk on or risk off environments. So the daily doesn't have a deep enough pullback, I think, to swing long. Um but it's entering the river so anybody who wants to build into that position uh can now again remember that this is very sideways you've got ultimate resistance for the uh last year of trading about around this level here and we're not there yet so it could uh, you know really reach that level if they're buying action here right so it's going to start looking long it is looking you know particularly long to me yet it is a little bit early, <clears throat> and I would rather see it come down into, you know, either support down here, right, which is the resistance here, um, or at least give me some supply signal. The four-hour chart is coming down, so we had a upward moving trend after that trend reached this uh, high here. It didn't post a higher high. After that went sideways as the first sign that this trend might have been cooked, we got a lower low right there. That way, uh, and that we've got the uh, second signal that uh, this is not continuing. Uh, and then we have a typical pullback into the broken uh, support here with selling pressure, and down we go, indicating the first sign of a potential reversal, right? Uh, because we're getting uh, a lower low. It should be, it should come a little bit lower uh, before it goes up in order to form a fully you know lower low because this could wake up in the next um you know hour and a half it could wake up and then we didn't get a lower low really we just got a move into support so to follow a potential reversal we will need to get a lower low see price pop in give us a lower high so see some selling pressure there and that would be the point to enter uh for shorts at this point now i'm not comfortable buying and i'm not necessarily comfortable selling because you're buy you're selling the shorts you're sh uh, selling the lows here at the worst possible price uh the lower value um after a um, already a hundred pit move uh so you need some sort of a pullback and i don't see enough support here maybe to buy on the four hour maybe the one hour is a nice buy for a quick we'll see that in a second but from the four hour perspective it feels neutral to short but it doesn't seem to have the setup i would like and the one hour has a pullback into that uh, support level. It's broken it over the uh, last couple hours. Um, we can go here and see that there's more support there. Um, and then you don't have anything until this kind of flip zone here. Um, and that's where you're probably, you don't want to see price come lower than that if you're going to trade this long. Uh, but it's, you know, if you get a dip like this, this is a very possible reaction. There could be a lot of demand there and orders sitting, and that could pop there. So you can take your gains on maybe a, a trade that moves there, 20, 30 pips, or that does this, right, 20, 30 pips. Um, really up to you. But again, it's the one hour. It doesn't have big prospects in terms of the number of pips. I don't know if you prefer to trade this maybe on lower time frames, but and you don't have a buy bar yet, but it is a neutral to long look on the one hour for me. Euro Aussie next. We've got uh, momentum to the downside here as well. <clears throat> the daily is breaking that support level, uh, coming into this one here. Uh, it's going to look neutral to long, I think. Again, not something that I would necessarily swing, uh, but um, you know, it can give you a positive bias for longs once it gets into the daily support, like positive bias for longs on the lower time frames, perhaps. From a weekly perspective, we're sideways. So 
And then the four hour uh, is going to look long. Again, you would have to go into the daily support levels here. So you would have to zoom into the, uh, what is this, uh, beginning of February and check your four hour levels to see if uh, if you like those. There is support around that area for multiple days. Um, and that could be a turning point for that H4 uh, look. It doesn't have a buy bar. Um, and it doesn't have a support level that you can see without zooming out, you know, significantly to that level. But um, it's it's going to look long as it gets through this into that level. And then the one hour is all, also has a neutral to long look for me. Doesn't have a buy bar that I like yet, uh, but it's basically going to be reacting to the same exact level uh, throughout all time frames here. It's not a there are no nested trades in here. It's the same one, really, except the time horizon is going to be different, right? You're going to trade for uh, and keep the position much less time on the one hour than you are if you're going to trade it on the four hour or daily. And pound New Zealand here, uh, the momentum today here is rather sideways. So that's going to be a neutral price action momentum. The daily is coming down ahead again into broken resistance. Not a lot of support, um, but it's already in the river, right? So for anybody who's looking for value trading or a potential pouring in of of, uh, of buyers, uh, this is definitely going to be the area as it comes down. But from a support perspective, again, this is a broken resistance perspective with some tiny support there. But from a real support perspective, you're looking at maybe something around here, right? Um, and that's a bit early. Uh, to buy unless you're very convinced of the of the trend. And again, this has been here for four days without movement, right? It's been in a four day range, um, indicating that uh, prices might be holding off until the uh, RBNZ meeting uh, tonight. Um, so tomorrow we might have a better idea of where this is going. Again, if we get a very dovish RBNZ, this might pop. If we get a very hawkish RBNZ, this might go back uh lower down into the maybe 55 dma and start reacting at that congestion support level over here so a bit early and from a swing perspective then you're very early right because you don't have any fibs there whatsoever if you go from a swing low to swing high your first fib is at that congestion level exactly yep so that's the best way from a for a from a, for a swing perspective uh, if you're looking at it just for bias confirmation for lower time frames, it's not going to give you much other than it's been down for a few days, right? Um, and it's hitting that broken resistance. Will that broken resistance turn into eventual key daily support? Well, it's hard to tell. But for the last four days, there has been an indication that it may, right? Because it hasn't come down through it. So you will have to keep that in mind when analyzing the lower time frames. But it looks slightly neutral to me, maybe neutral to long. Um, as it comes down into those averages. The four hour have a setup, you've got the same kind of concept, right? You have price that keeps moving up on a regular basis, then all of a sudden doesn't give you a higher high and gives you a lower low. Um, again, if depending on how you look at these swings, but it's a lower low than here. Over there and over here as well, no higher highs. In fact, they're lower highs, right? So this looks like there's a bit of pressure to further down. Um, the way that price action is hitting that support level uh, relentlessly over the last few days. Mm. So neutral to short there would be the bias, but again, no real uh, setup because you would like to see price come back uh, or actually make a very clear lower low, then come up and then give you the sell bar for a continuation reversal if that is what price wants to do. And again, looking at the daily, it could uh, come down slightly uh, more. Uh, we'll see. And then the one hour, the one hour doesn't have a setup of any type and is a completely neutral, choppy, sideways action that I don't see any benefit in trying to, you know, decipher. And then pound Aussie to finish these.